welcome to my video on the various aspects of my quadrator. Seen in front of you here, this whole blue board is an ARM development board. It features an ARM Cortex M3 processor made from ST Micro and a couple of custom little boards that I created to interface with the various aspects of the design. And then we have a commercially available chassis which I bought from uh, Hobby King. Some motors and ESCs which I also bought from Hobby King and this giant battery which powers the whole device. Now uh, we've got a radio on the side here which communicates with the base station. Inside the device right in the center which is very hard to make out but you can see these wires here leading to it is an IMU that measures the orientation of the quadrata in relation to space. Underneath we've got some clips for holding the battery and then we've got all these wires leading to the different ESCs. Now if I plug the battery in we will hear this noise that we can hear whenever the ESCs are good to go. If I can get this in Now, the arm board is alive. We have a blinking LED which I added to make sure that the program is actually executing. This runs in its own separate thread as the operating system is threaded that runs on here. And if the operating system crashes, this LED will not be flashing. And we have a power LED, a JTAG port just here. This JTAG port will be important in this video later. USB serial which I use for programming. A reset button and a couple of user buttons which I haven't actually got to do anything anymore. You can see here that I've connected a device called a JTAG to the actual computer itself. This is because I'm going to talk about the reason why this does not fly yet. Uh, with the motor driver, it is a separate thread on its own and it is responsible for the pulse of modulation for these four individual motors. Now, when running the stabilization algorithm, which connects to the IMU, uh, for some reason one of the square root functions, using root means squaring the incoming data, uh, causes the motor driver to stop. If the motor driver stops, then none of these will actually spin at all. However, if you're not running the stabilization algorithm, then the actual control to the motors will either be just the throttle, like I have it here to demonstrate the throttle, or they won't spin at all. Now, unfortunately for a quadrotor, you happen to need both the motor spinning and the stabilization. So, that brings me to the JTAG. A JTAG is a device, so I've learned, that you can use to look at the different registers inside the actual chip here. And from that I should be able to see where the program crashes with the square root function and hopefully fix this uh, problem and have it get off the ground. We have the first prototype for the Quadrata base station. Data is sent from an Android phone to this Bluetooth adapter here, which is then received by the Arduino to a Milanova development board here. Then the data is processed, very little, it's actually just transferred over this other serial port all the way to this 433 MHz radio, which is how I communicate with the quadrotor. Now the reason for using the Arduino platform instead of, for example, a PIC is because the software is very easy to develop and there's very little to do in the means of hardware in this project. So the actual development of the idea was really really simple so it was easy to get a quick idea off the ground. Now on the Android itself I can change the slider and data sent. And then currently I have the system paired with the Android hence the green light down the bottom here. However this red light means that the system is currently locked. If I turn the key I can unlock the system green light signifies good to go. Now, if I turn it around so we can see the radio lights, by changing the throttle on the Android application, I'm able to send data. However, if I lock the system, these keys are removable, if I lock the system, any movement on the slider, while received by the actual unit itself, is not retransmitted. This gives the user control over the base station, being able to lock and unlock it. Here we have my Android phone, and 
we open up the app that I created. This app is specifically designed to connect over Bluetooth to the base station and then it shows these three values here, X, Y and Z, which show the tilt of the phone, the accelerometer, and it also has a throttle control here. This throttle controller communicates over Bluetooth with the actual device itself and these X, Y and Z values do nothing at the moment because I have not got that far. However, the actual Bluetooth protocol was handled by a library which I found designed to communicate with an Arduino, hence the reason I use the Arduino to start off with. Uh, it turned out that was very, very simple to implement in PIC, so later on I developed a PIC base station for the throttle. The actual Arduino application that you can see here, I developed this myself and it was very simple indeed because all there is is a throttle value, an accelerometer, and I used an existing library for the Bluetooth communication. And finally, we have all the different aspects of the project working at the same time. From here, I can control the throttle, which sends the data to the quadrotor. Unfortunately, I was stupid and changed the whole way the motors work. So now, the way that this sends the data is out of date. The way that this one sends the data is correct, but this one has a problem with sending zeros at the same time, which basically cancels out all the data it sends. So, this throttle control is pretty buggy. Now, the whole system is actually quite bad at the moment. However, they're all simple fixes which I can't do because I updated my computer and don't have any of the software running. So it's all such a sad situation. Anyway, by playing with the throttle, I can get all the motors to spin. Although for some reason, sometimes one of them will just spin on its own. And then by turning the throttle down, I can get the rest of them to spin, sometimes. I can reset the system to turn them all off. Although, I, I don't know, there's a lot of different little bugs. If I update the system in here, or revert the system in here, it should all work fine. However, all these bugs combined are not a good thing at all. The only thing left is just to reset the system and obviously fix all these bugs, which should be easy enough to fix if I had a computer that was actually capable of fixing all these problems at the moment. Unfortunately, I don't have the software to do so at this present time.